This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with a good friend, Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? What's happening? What's happening? Thanks for having me. Hey, you're my stock guy in the channel, and uh, I just got to ask, uh, what, what are your thoughts about the June bottom? Is it a solid bottom? Is it a fake bottom? Are we going back to retest it? What's going on with the June bottom? What do you think? Yeah, uh, so <laughs> forecasting markets is uh, the business that we're in, but it's not something we like to have a gun to our head and said, is it in? <laughs> but gun to my head, I will say this, that it will at least be retested, I think. I think we'll get a retest of it. Do we break through it and go down further? I don't know, but I don't foresee the market um, chopping through this and continuing to go up to hit all-time highs without a significant retest of probably that June bottom. And yeah. where does it go from there? That's going to largely be dependent upon the economic data that's hitting at that point, I think. Well, I think that's a great non-answer. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, said, I said retest, so it's got to get back down there. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, think that's, I think that's important for people to realize, right? The normal bear market, uh, normal bear markets aren't March of 2020. You don't just right. get this, Oh, yeah, yeah. You, the you know, the V bottom that lasts 45 Bam. minutes and, and yeah. everyone's rich. <laughs> That's not normal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but there's a lot of traders out there that uh, they've learned and be conditioned to buy the dip. Well, how about this? 2021, 250 million brokerage accounts get opened. Mm -hmm. Retail brokerage accounts get opened in 2021. By far the biggest number of all time. What percentage of stocks go up in 2021? 96. <laughs> why would you, why would you think you could do anything wrong ever? Yeah. You, yeah. That's like sort of walking into a casino, putting a hundred dollars down on a roulette well and hitting. Yeah, I got this shit. I got yeah, this. I got 3,500 <laughs> bucks, man. I'm rich. I'm out. I'm going to do it. Again. And then you lose every other time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it, it's been a wacky market where when the influx of people came into the market because of stimulus checks, because everyone was at home, because everyone just had more time than they were used to, it came in a confluence of events came together and, and everyone was a winner. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it's a really good word in the market and I use it a lot. And it's one I had never heard of before. Super smart guy told me it's anantiadromia and anantiadromia. Yep. So yeah, one more it, it's time? actually, what's the word? He quizzed me and he was like, how do you spell it? It's actually phonetically spelled exactly as a, as a so the word is anantiadromia. And anantiadromia just means the tendency for things to swing to their extremes. Mm. So, you know, we talk about things in a pendulum a lot of time, like things should be here from a stock market perspective because all logic earnings, et cetera, say that they're going to swing too far in both directions and you have to be aware of it as an investor and you have to get less greedy when everyone else is greedy and more greedy when everyone else is stingy on the other side. And that's where you make your money in investing. If you're going to do things that are different than just, you know, dollar cost average, I'm going to buy whatever it is at consistent rips. It's where you make the difference is at the 20% extremes on the ends. Yeah. When things get blown out in either direction, you either get really greedy and really aggressive, or you have to bat down the hatches on the other side a little bit and get a little bit more uncomfortably tight, too much bond exposure, too much cash exposure, whatever it is, when things are really good at the end of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing about bear markets is, is they do get retested, right? And you know, my, I, I suffered my, you know, my, whatever the hell that word is on the upside only to lose it all in the dot com crash. Right. Yeah. Which again, there was a time where everything won, right. You put a dot com on it. It won. And you know, you turn seven grand into 200, you feel like a genius and then you lose it all in a couple of frauds. And yep. um, I think, I think unfortunately some people are going to suffer some pain and not that they haven't already. I mean, if you were in the crypto market for the last year or so, you've really got hammered. I think yeah. some of that's coming to meme stocks. I think uh, we'll talk about Bed Bath and Beyond in a minute. I AMC's getting hammered today. This freaking this thing they're doing with Ape. It's just we're talking about in video number three. It annoys me. It's it's um <laughs> not good behavior in my opinion. Uh, but back yeah, here's, here's go ahead. Yeah, here's a couple stats on, on the on the bottom the bottoming process. Thank you. Is that if you look back at history since World War II, there's been nine like massive rate hike cycles where they had to get on the gas and really raise rates quickly out of those nine, only one time did the market bottom prior to hmm. at the actual fed st stopping their rate hike process. So I actually said in the last video, I said it was eight times. It's nine times. So nine times, eight out of those nine times, the stock market bottomed after the fed stopped. 
So right now, if we were to say June was the bottom, like that's so far before the Fed is stopping the rate hike cycle. Yeah. They're telling us they're going to hike, hike through the end of next year. And when it did the one time, it was like a month before they stopped. But that's on interesting. Average, yeah, go ahead. I know that's interesting, right? So just, I just want to repeat what I think I heard to make sure I get it. Yeah. So you've gone back to World War II, nine Fed rate tightening cycles. Oh, by the way, folks, yep. Fed is tightening today. So check. Right. Eight of those nine times, the stock market bottomed after the Fed stopped. Correct. And Correct. nobody thinks the Fed's stopping in September. Correct. And the one time it did not play out that way was about a month before the Fed stopped. So like, so, say the Fed's going to stop in, in January, February next year, whatever it is. Like the, okay. the, the most optimistic scenario would be the fact that the, the market bottomed in December, right? Got it. And that, again, this is if history is repeating itself. Um, but like over it. the long term, what they said, what, what you see is that actually the other eight times, it was an average of 16 months after the Fed stopped. After the Fed, Fed raised rates the final time, 16 months later is the average. Over a year. On them. So yep, again, that it just, just mid 2024. Yeah, I was going to say, so let's just say the Fed did their final bump in March. We'd be we'd be 12, we'd be four or five quarters out. So we're in 2024 before we have a bottom. You're in the oh. summer of 2024. Wow. Yeah. That, that's some good data right there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to swell, but that's what people have to realistically understand. More likely than not, if, again, history is any indication here, the market really chops along. You might right. not get like that big blowout downside. I'm not saying we're going down 40% from here like that. That's not by any stretch of the imagination what I anticipate. But we could chop. We can retest that. We could mm. go through that June low. Yeah. Um, and again, like it, it, th this is what this is what the market does. You were in a tough period in, in the dot-com bubble. I was not investing at that point. And that period, that just kept going. It just, yeah. you, you couldn't find an end to it. Yeah, it, it was, was five years or something. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and the, you know, the, the three years were really bad. So you hit 2000 really bad. I think it was 2001 kind of popped up a little bit a little and bit, then yeah. 2002 just baked people. It was bad. And so it's, yeah, it, you know, 2000, you know, 2020 is not what you should anticipate out of the market when we hit a bear market and it just recovers and bounces and off the races. So what we're probably have just experienced kind of to put a, a, a tie together video one and two is a bear market rally kind of yep. momentum. Oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah. We like overtly said, someone said to us that the other day on our Instagram, they were like, Hey, we know you guys are a little bit on the fence. We're like, no, 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 we're not on the fence. We're defensive right now. We yeah. don't like the stock market right now. It's what we're, we're and, and so we put it out like, in the video. It was like, I want to be crystal clear. We don't like stocks right now. Yeah. And it's not to say we're out of stocks. It's just no. in the, in the guardrails that our portfolios allow us to be in, we're on the conservative side. Yeah. Yeah. It's the right place to be. And again, that could change, right? You 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 can make daily Certainly. changes, but uh, Certainly. yeah, it's, it's actively managed, and you pay attention to the economic data every day. You look at the company's own and look at things from a bottom up perspective. You got to put the work in. Yeah, so I think you're absolutely right. I, I again, I think I, I think the economy is slowing down. I think earnings are being cut. I think multiples have come back in. I think the buy the dip crowd. I think a lot of this last run was retail investors getting one last bite of the apple, and they're going to get hurt. And um, we're going to talk about meme here in a second, but like. Meme is a, is a contra indicator. Yes, like, exactly. It, it's got to be. It's got to be. Look when it exploded. And, you know, like right now, the market starts to seem to be rolling over a little bit and memes taking off again. It's like, what is going on, guys? Yeah. it's, it's a And very, girls. Yeah. Everybody. Anybody who's buying the dip is kind of crazy. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, th I do think, I think the, ju the June bottom gets tested. Um, it just, to your point, it, we've, we've got to test it again. I think we break through it, you know, gun to my head, but. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm naturally, I'm not in stocks at all. So I have no yep. skin in the game either way, but yeah, it's, yep. it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It feels to me, it feels too much like the dot com era, which just, just cause like, can you tell me why it went up? Just cause really just cause really. Okay. I got <laughs> Sounds it. like my two-year-old daughter. Yeah. Just cause <laughs> that's not what's why, why? Yeah. why? Oh, I remember the why word. Why, why, why? Yeah. yeah I remember that. Enjoy. Uh, do me a favor. Where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram is the best place. At yeah, Life Goal you Investments. put out daily stuff. I appreciate the stuff. I see it every day. So thank you for what you do, Taylor. Appreciate the kind words.